we praise God. Come on, clap your hands and shout glory. Now, the least y'all can do is praise God with me. Glory to God. Somebody shout, he's a healer. Come on, clap your hands and shout glory. To the book of Romans tonight. Amen. I thank God for being a healer. Romans chapter number one. Amen. The book of Amen. Romans, Paul's epistle to the church at Rome. Rome, verse 1. Paul, I think we stand for the reading of the word in upper room, don't we? Let's stand for the reading of the word. Let's honor the word on tonight. Romans chapter number 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we receive grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. To all of you in North Carolina, the beloved of God, call to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. To all of you tonight in upper room, amen, the beloved of God, call to be saints. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. Right before you take your seat, reach over and grab your name by the hand and say, just call me a saint. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Look at that one behind you. Say, if you're going to call me anything, call me a saint. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Somebody wave your hand and shout, I'm a saint. You can take your seats. Amen. What a glorious thing. Amen. What an auspicious occasion when amen, all of us have gathered. What a, amen. We've laughed and clapped our hands, but what a solemn gathering. Amen. When the people of God, when the saints of God get together and Amen. It's something when the saints gather. And yet we've got to be wise enough to know tonight that we are not the only ones gathering. I need a talk back church tonight. We're not the only ones gathering because, amen, people and forces are gathering all over the world. Can I start like this tonight and maybe holler a little later? Yeah, people and forces are gathering all over the world that, amen, we have some natural gatherings. Amen. And we've got some supernatural gatherings. We, we have the ultra-liberals gathering in Washington and spreading their doctrine of humanism and secularism. Amen. We have pedophiles and drug dealers gathering in our schools. Homosexuals gathering across the nation. I can't hear nobody say nothing. We've got murders and rapists gathering in our streets and black boys are being gathered in prisons and Putin's missiles are being gathered in Russia and China's weapons of mass destruction being gathered. There's a whole lot of gathering going on. And of course, amen, we have supernatural gathering, amen. The Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and rulers of darkness, amen. Demons are gathering, spirits of perversion are gathering, and greed and infirmity and death and violence and antichrist spirits are gathering. Certainly there's a whole lot of gathering going on. And yet, saints, in order for our gathering, in order for Shiloh to be effective, we've got to know who we are. We are saints. Grab the hand of somebody and say, we are saints. Now, now, we've got to be careful with that word saint. Amen. We've got to be careful the way we use that word. That word does not mean that we are perfect. It means we belong to God. Hit that neighbor and say, call me a saint. And we've got to be careful how we use those words because now, amen, the world uses words loosely. And now, amen, what used to mean one thing in the 21st century, it means another. Gay used to mean happy. Someone say something. And now it means something else. Amen. Amen. We're using words loosely. Now we call sperm donors fathers. And human incubators mothers. And men want to be called women. And women want to be called men. And, and, it's, and it's impertinent, amen. It's contingent upon saints. That we live up to what our name says. That we are not a group of people that shout and dance on Sunday and serve the devil on Monday. Our gathering is ineffective if we don't understand tonight that we are saints. In, in, in the text, in, in this wonderful prolific epistle, Paul writes to the church at Rome. 
And in the church at Rome, amen, he begins to identify himself. And he says, I, the servant of Christ. In the Greek, that word service means doulos. It means slave. And a slave is someone who is entirely consumed by their master. I wish somebody would lift their hand and say, I'm entirely consumed. Oh, y'all didn't say that, right? Say, so I'm, ent I'm, I'm entirely consumed by Jesus Christ. Paul wants us to know that he's in a permanent relationship of servanthood. That it's no temporary situation. It's not something that's going to change from week to week, but it's permanent. He's in a permanent relationship of servanthood to Jesus Christ. He, he wants us to know, amen. He says, amen, in the epistle written to the church at Corinth, that I, therefore, the prisoner of God. Amen. Some of you, amen, I hope you've not had any dealings with the penitentiary system, but because I'm a criminal lawyer, I know about prisons. And the thing about prisons are that prisoners have no say-so. Amen. In the prison, they tell them when to get up. And they tell them when to lay down. They tell them when to take a shower. And they tell them when to go to the yard. They tell them when to eat. Paul said, when you're a prisoner, it's not your agenda, it's not your motive, it's a person that you belong to. I wonder, is there anybody here tonight that says, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ? Amen. Paul said, so much so that it's no more I, but it's the Christ that lives in me. When you are a prisoner of Jesus Christ, you're full of nevertheless. Touch your belly and say, nevertheless. I wanted to do this, but nevertheless. Huh? I wanted to go there, but nevertheless. Huh? Thought I was going to do this, but nevertheless. Huh? There's a place in God where you come to nevertheless. Lift your hands and say, I therefore the prisoner. And so in this epistle, in this magnificent epistle, and then Paul began to identify himself. And, and the wonderful thing about it is that in the beginning, Paul is convinced about his calling. He's made his election sure. There's no question. There's no ecclesiastical identity crisis. Paul has no confusion about who he is. The problem in the 21st century is that the church is still confused about who she is. I wish somebody would say something. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The church is not what it's supposed to be simply because we don't know who we're supposed to be. And now there's more world in the church and less church in the world. I wish somebody would say something. We were called to be thermometers and now we act like we're thermostats. Huh? Uh, we no longer set the pace, but now the world is trying to set the pace for us. Yes, in this hedonistic and humanism and the secularism and all of these different isms that are attacking the church. Amen. It's important that the saints know who we are. Amen. There used to be a time, amen, that you could look at us and tell we were saints. And I'm not talking about long dresses and no makeup. Come on, say amen. But I'm talking about a lifestyle. I wish somebody would say something. Amen. In the 21st century, amen, we look at people and we don't know who you are. Come on, say amen. Amen. The fashion industry, amen, church women, amen, we're 85% of the consumers, amen, in department stores, but they don't make fashions with us in mind. Because they know whatever they create, we'll put it on. Come on, say amen. They know as godly women, we won't, bulk, we won't boycott and say, I'm not going to wear that. We won't press people. You're going to have to make dresses that fit us and dresses that are the right length. They don't do that because they know that we're dying to be accepted. Uh, I was looking at, on TV the other day, and, and the young people were, amen, the praise began to go forth. I guess you call it praise. I don't want to call it praise. The music started. Uh huh. And the young people began to cabbage patch. And I want you to know when the saints get happy, we don't cabbage patch and we don't do the hustle. When the saints get happy, we shout. I wish somebody would say something. Look at your neighbor and say, The saints don't cabbage patch. And the saints don't do the hustle. When the saints get happy, we just shout. Come on, clap your hands and praise God right there. And so, Paul, amen makes his election sure, Paul, who's not confused about who he is, writes to the church at Rome. The wonderful thing, amen, and the incredible thing about this epistle is that at the writing of it, Paul had never been to Rome. He had never been to Rome. Paul did not know the people that he was writing to. There's this powerful discerning word, amen, this clear and sharp prophetic letter that he sends to a people that he's never been to. A place he's never seen. And you wonder, how could he do it? Well, that's simply because Paul knew that saints are saints everywhere. That you don't have to know a saint. That if you're a saint, we know each other, don't we? 
that the saints in North Carolina are just like the saints in Louisiana. And the saints in Louisiana are just like the saints in Washington, D.C. And the saints in Washington, D.C. are just like the saints in New York. It doesn't make any difference about the geographical location when you're a saint. It doesn't make any difference about the race, black or white, brown or red, when you're a saint. It doesn't make any difference about your educational background, GED or PhD, when you're a saint. It doesn't make any difference about your economical background, rich or poor, when you're a saint. Somebody clap your hand and shout, I'm a saint. Amen. Saints are always the same, no matter the test, no matter the trial, no matter the situation. One more time, holler, I'm a saint. No, Paul did not know the church at Rome. Amen. He had never been there, but he knew their experiences. He'd never been there, but he knew what they were going through. And that's simply because all saints go through sometimes. I wish somebody would say something. Amen. See, we, we, amen. Everybody gets discouraged sometimes. Huh? Everybody gets disappointed sometimes. I wish somebody would talk. Everybody, amen, gets disillusioned sometimes. And, and there's some of you out there saying, I, I've never been disappointed, Prophet is Floyd, and I've never been discouraged, and I've never been disillusioned. Well, that's because you don't belong to God. Because everybody that belongs to God, huh, come on here, huh, gets disappointed sometimes. Huh. Everybody that belongs to God huh, gets disillusioned sometimes. My grandma said dogs don't chase parked cars, they chase cars that are moving. Clap your hands and shout, I'm a saint. And so Paul is able to write to a people that he does not know because he knows their situation. He knows that all saints go through sometimes. Grab somebody by the hand, say, everybody's going through. Psalm 34 said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. Hey, the word says God, the godly would suffer persecution. Am I talking right? We've been endured for a night, but joy comes in the morning. If, you, if you've never been through, you're not a saint. And so Paul writes to Rome, and I'm almost through. And while he writes to Rome, amen, he, amen, he remembers who they're serving under. At this time, amen, Rome is serving under that lunatic Nero. The madman of Rome. And if you know anything about Nero, Nero killed his wife and his mother. Decreed that Christianity was illegal, persecuted, and crucified the saints. Remember, they lived in caves and hid. And it was Nero, amen, that set the saints on fire and used them as human torches. Amen. Paul died on Nero's chopping block. If you remember, amen, in the book of 2 Timothy, he writes and he tells Timothy, amen, bring Mark now. Because he's needful for ministry. Amen. He's old now and he's looking, amen, while he writes his epistle. Isn't it something that you can help people when you're going through? He's sitting in prison, looking out of the bars, and he begins to write. He says, Timothy, bring me the books, but most importantly, bring me the parchments. How many of you know when you're going through, the word will help you? He says, bring me the parchments. He said, and then bring me my cloak. And then he says, I want to tell you something. Alexander Coppersmith has done me much evil. And then he says, whatever you do, come before winter. He writes, amen, 2 Timothy, looking at Nero's chopping block. Paul did not know the church at Rome. He didn't know the people at Rome. But how many of you know that when people don't know what you're going through, the word can find you? Huh? When people, amen, when you haven't told anybody about your situation, somebody lift your hand and say, the word can find you. When you're raising children by yourself, when cancers attack your body, when you're struggling with more months than money, when you're working dead-end jobs, when you have troubled marriages, when loved ones walk out and die out and move out, amen, it doesn't matter, praise God, whether people know your personal business, we know the Nero that you're serving under. Because every saint, clap your hands, say every saint, Go through something. I'm almost through. But he said, not just saints, but we are the beloved of God. Lift your hands and say, I'm the beloved of God. Oh, come on, say it with power. Shout, I'm the beloved of God. And so the whole time I'm going through, I go through with a different attitude because I'm the beloved of God. Amen. Sick, but I have a different attitude because I'm the beloved of God. Broke, but I don't look like it because I'm the beloved of God. By myself, but I don't look lonely because I'm the beloved of God. Clap your hands, I'm the beloved of God. 2 Corinthians 4 and 8 says, I'm troubled on every side, but I'm not distressed. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I'm cast down, but I'm not destroyed. I'm a saint. And so before I sink, I'll win. Before I go down, I'll go up. Clap your hands, shout, I'm a saint. And I'm the beloved of God. Saints are who we are. Saints are who we are. You can't be in Christ 
and not be a saint. And you can't be in a church, amen, that belongs to Christ and not be saint. And so we've talked about being saints, but how do we continue to be saints in the 21st century? How do we keep on keeping on? How do you keep on living holy? Amen. Your theme helps us. Paul said to, Jude said, excuse me, to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Amen. Contend in the Greek means to fight like an athlete. Grab somebody by the hand so you got to fight sometimes. Oh, come on, let's have some church now. Grab your neighbor by the hand so you got to fight sometime to stay a saint. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Even in the house of God, amen, you've got to fight, amen, not to say anything you want to say. Uh, you've got to fight, praise God, not to go back and grab that language that you used to have. You've got to fight to keep yourself in the love of God. And you're trying to keep your mouth shut and people think you're scared. You want to say, I'm not scared, baby, I'm a saint. He said, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saint. Honestly continue. And when it talks about the faith that was once delivered, we're not talking about your average faith. We're not talking about faith for cars and houses and honey and money. But we're talking about the foundation that the church of God was built on. We're talking about the doctrine, amen. The foundation, amen, that was laid by the apostles and prophets. Amen. What is that foundation? It is that we know who God is and we know what God does. Lift your hands and say, I know who God is. And I know what God does. Say one more time. I, I know who God is. And I know what God does. Why don't you clap your hands and shout glory right there. As the saints of God, we build ourselves up on our most holy faith. Amen. The doctrine, praise God, of Jesus Christ and him crucified. We do not build ourselves. Hear me now. We're not like the world. We don't build a foundation on carnality and flesh. But we build our foundation on Jesus Christ and him crucified. That any doctrine that alleviates, amen, the power of the cross, any preacher, praise God, that does not remind the church that blood was shed, amen, even in our songs, amen, we remind ourselves, living he loved me and dying he saved me, but buried he carried my sins far away, but all rising he justified me, freed me forever. I tell you, one day he's coming back. Clap your hands, a glorious day. That, that's your most holy faith. That's your most holy faith. Hit your neighbor say, that's your most holy holy faith. Amen. We build ourselves upon the knowledge, amen, that we serve a living God and that God can do anything. The song would have said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly clinging to Jesus' name on Christ the solid rock I stand. Somebody clap your hands and say, all other ground is sinking sand. Amen. That's the doctrine. That is, amen, our most holy faith. Simply put, saints should never forget who God is. Lift your hands and don't let me forget who God is. Who is he? He is the omniscient God. He's a God that knows everything. David said in Psalms 139, Lord, you searched me and you know me. You know my down sittings and you know my uprisings. You're acquainted with all of my ways. Amen. Nothing surprises God. You were surprised, but God never is. He knew, praise God, the end from the beginning. Somebody talk to me. Clap your hand and say he knows everything. He's the omnipresent God. He's a God that's everywhere at the same time. David said, if I take the wings of the morning, amen, if I go down to the uttermost parts of the sea, when I get there, you're already there. He's a God that's everywhere all at the same time. He's the omnipotent God. He's the God of all power. Somebody throw back your head and say, all power. Come on, clap your hands and shout all power. All power, that's any power. Clap your hands one more time and say he's all power. He is a God, amen, that stepped out on nothing and made something. He's a God that tossed the sun and the moon in the sky. He's a God that scattered, amen, this, amen, the stars across the horizon the way a little girl throws her jacks. He's a God, praise God, to put the green in the grass and the yellow in the sun and the blue in the sky. He's a God that put the sweet in the peach and the sour in the lemon. He's God. Uh -huh. uh, if you're broke, he's Jehovah Jireh. If you're sick, he's Jehovah Rapha. Come on here. If you're by yourself, he's Jehovah Shalom. Going through hell, he's Jehovah Shalom. Come on, he's God today. And beside, he's no other. Somebody clap your hands and holler, he's God now. And since I know who he is, it's easy to find out what he does. Shake somebody by the hand and say, I know what he does. What does he do? Anybody got a testimony tonight? Come on, clap your hand and say, he's a God that can do anything. Come on, open your mouth and shout anything. Come on, clap your hand and say,
say anything. He's a God that can solve every problem. He can answer every question. He makes crooked things straight. He can heal every disease, right every wrong, mend every heart, change every mind, deliver every soul, make a way where there's no way, provide every need, conquer every foe. Clap your hand and say anything. He's a God that if he works, nobody can hinder. And if he hinders, nobody can work. If he speaks, praise God, a dead man will live. And if he speaks again, that same man will die. Clap your hand and say, he's God. He's God. He's God. He's God. Amen. Building myself. Amen. Reminding myself when I'm going through that I serve a living God. Come on, talk to your neighbor and say, remember. Come on, look him dead in the face and say, remember. When you're going through, you serve a living God. Come on, shake their hand and say, he can't do anything. Come on, clap your hand and shout glory. Somebody praise him right there. Open your mouth and say, anything. God of my most holy faith, amen. 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 Building myself up on my, on my most holy faith. That's how I stay a saint. Tell you, they say, that's how you stay a saint. But not just that, amen. The Bible says, amen, and praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody clap your hands, say Holy Ghost. Okay, come on, let's go in now, boys. Come on, clap your hands and shout Holy Ghost. Somebody that's got it, shout Holy Ghost. If ever there was a time when we needed power, you don't have power without the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't know what, amen, about the 21st century saints, but we learned in old time holiness, amen, that it took, it took the Holy Ghost to live right. Somebody clap your hands so you can't live right without the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost gives you power. Now, I need two or three people got the Holy Ghost to jump up and say, Holy Ghost. He come down to the ocean. Clap your hands. Y'all said, I don't want to have no church. Y'all don't want to have no church. If the church ever need anything, the church needs power. Look down your row and say, power, 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 power. Hey, hey, Look in the back of you and say, power, 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 power. Now, I'm not, not going to make you talk to your neighbor all night long, but just grab them one more time and say, neighbor, you don't know who you're sitting next to. So don't let this outfit fool you. You're sitting next to power incognito. Tell your neighbor, I can shout that demon out of your life. I can clap cancer out of your body. Open your mouth and shout, I've got power. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Somebody said the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, now, the old saints told us, amen, they said if you got a shoe, the tongue was part of the shoe. Huh? Amen. Do y'all remember that? Amen. That you don't go and buy a tongue, that if you get the shoe, there's going to be a tongue in the shoe. Come on, say amen. Amen. We're not saying amen that you just need tongues because we have a whole lot of devils speaking in tongues. I need somebody to say something right there. But tongues is the evidence, not to the saint, but to the unbeliever. We need tongues. We need the Holy Ghost. We need it with power, but we need the fruit of the Spirit. Clap your hands to the fruit of the Spirit. If ever there was a time that the church needed power, too few of us sitting on these pews tonight, tonight do not have the Holy Ghost. I need someone to say something. Amen. When I grew up in old time holiness, amen, I would leave, amen, school. I left college and went to 12 o'clock prayer because evangelist Ruby Sample would be there and I would, amen, drop my books and get on my knees, amen, and we were challenged, amen, when I was going to school, amen, I, I was running, amen, at that time I was Miss, Corp Cor Miss Corpus Christi, amen, and I was getting ready to go to the Miss Texas pageant and I was getting ready to do, and Mother Crouch, amen, she's gone home, Mother Crouch, amen, Bishop uh, T.D. Igerhart was my bishop, amen, in the Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal Temple Church of God in Christ, amen, and she told me that sanctified women didn't wear bathing suits, and she said, sanctified girls don't parade their bodies across, amen, the floor. And I came and let her pray. And she laid her hands in my chest and she said, God has need of thee. But the devil wishes to sift you. And that night I took off my bathing suit. I wish somebody would say something. 
And I got on my knees and asked God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Then, amen, we were 18 and 19 and 17 and 16. Amen. Now these young people, amen, and it was because the old saints lived a life that made it us contend. We were jealous. Well, I can't get nobody to say nothing. They lived in such a way that we were jealous for the way they lived. And we wanted to have that power. We were 16 and 17 and 18 and 19. And there was a crew of us that were teenagers with the Holy Ghost. I want you young people to know, amen, that you can get the Holy Ghost. Look down your road and say, do you have the Holy Ghost? Hey, but you, you've got to have it. You've got to have it because it's, it is your only means of power. I wish somebody would shout, your only means of power. Wait, wait, wait just a second. I, 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 I found to get here, amen, if you watch the national news, Monroe, my city was attacked by a tornado. Amen. I was in the mall walking around getting my nails in, my feet done, done, getting ready to come here, and the lights went off. Amen. And me, you know, not knowing what was going on. Amen. I should have stayed my behind in the mall. But I went out, praise God, and got into the car. The wind was blowing. Amen. I almost slipped down the bayou. They say I don't drive well on dry. <laughs> Amen. All my sins called. Pastor, are you all right? I know you're not driving. I know you're not outside. Pastor, tell me you're not outside. I was outside. Amen. And the car was going back and forth. Amen. And soon, half of Monroe was in the dark. And right now, amen, I believe, amen, still 50% of the houses don't have lights, except for those of us who have generators. For those of us that understand, you need another source of power. I wish somebody would say something. Oh, I can't get no help up in here. Uh, there's some of us that understood that storms come sometimes. And high winds blow sometimes. And sometimes the rain falls. And you're going to need another source of power. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're going to go through something. And you're going to need another source of power. Clap your hand and shout, Holy Ghost. I can't get no help up in here. Somebody that's got it say, Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and shout glory to God. You're going to need another source of power to keep you in the light when the whole world's in darkness. And so while everybody else was feeling around in the dark, I was crossing my legs, eating collard greens and cornbread, sitting in the light, watching law and order, because I had another source of power. Grab your neighbor by the hand. When everybody was dying of cancer, the reason we're alive right now is not because we're cute. We had another source of power. Clap your hand and say another source. I can't get no help up in here. What kills the world can't kill me. What stops the world can't stop me. Oh, yeah. Clap your hands at power. Take your seat. And, take your seat and look at somebody. Say, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have it. I can't bo -bo -bo -shaya. Because how many of you know you go through some things sometimes that English won't work the case? Huh? Grab that neighbor for the last time, say neighbor. Sometimes I go through some stuff and my vocabulary is limited. Sometimes I go through some stuff and I don't want the devil know what I'm saying. So I just ikebasikobosha. I kia na ni oshanda na bosha. Ikebasikobosha. And heaven knows all about it. Clap your hand and say, Holy Ghost. times like these you need the Holy Ghost take your seat and ask your neighbor do you have the Holy Ghost uh-huh touch that neighbor say do you have the Holy Ghost and if they look at you like they don't know what you're talking about hit and say give it to her oh, touch that neighbor say give it to him give it to him give it to him come on clap your hands and praise God right there you, you got to have the Holy Ghost. Look down your road, so you got to have it. You got to, you got to, you got to. I wish y'all wouldn't look scary. I, I wish two or three bowls like would say, you got to, you, you got to, you got to. Because you're going to need another source of power. You got to, you, you got to. Amen. You got to have it, and you got to have it with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, I want you to know, praise God, amen, you can get the Holy Ghost. Maybe, praise God, we'll pray a little bit. And if your hand says, you can get the Holy Ghost. Now, now, I understand that there's some churches, amen, that adhere, amen, to a policy of teaching people how to speak in tongues. Grab your neighbor and say, can't nobody teach you how to speak in tongues. I can teach you how to get the Holy Ghost. 
But can't nobody teach you how to speak in the Holy Ghost? Because the Bible said, out of your belly. Oh, I want to have old-fashioned church and y'all don't want to help me. Throw up your hands say, out of the ocean. Grab your belly say, out of your belly. Shall flow rivers of living water. Clap your hands say, belly, 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 belly. Amen. On Friday night deliverance services, those old mothers used to walk the floor and say, you need an old-fashioned belly washing. Clap your hands and old-fashioned belly washing. So out of your belly, clap your hand and shout glory to God. Yeah, yeah, you got to have, you got to have it. Hit that neighbor and say, you got to have it. Amen. In times like these, y'all sit down. Y'all don't want to have church in times like these. Amen. You've got to shift your prayer. Somebody say, shift your prayer. Amen. In times like these, amen, you can't just pray, amen, no little cute, simple two-minute prayer. Come on, the demons are too great. Come on here. The fight is too intense. Somebody say something. Amen. Who ever thought that we live in a nation, amen, where men could marry men and women could marry women. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we got to pray in the Holy Ghost. And Pastor was saying something profound, amen, when he said, amen, everything that you need. Prayer is the vehicle by which God allows things to get to heaven. Let me tell you, saints, to refuse to pray is to rob God. Listen to me. To refuse to pray is to rob God of the ability to help you. Because he set it up, praise God, on the earth that you got to ask in order to be cold, shy, in order to receive. And you got to seek before you find it. And you've got to knock before you open. And prayer is the asking and the seeking and the knocking. So when you refuse to pray, you stop the vehicle by which heaven brings you what you need. Clap your hands say, I believe, I'll pray. Everybody, see Kobo, shot. Saints, I feel like praying now. Grab somebody by the hand, say, I feel like praying. Come on, get somebody by the hand, say, a little bit of prayer, fix it. A little bit of prayer, work it out. The Bible said to this end, men are always to pray and not faint. You show me some fainting people, I'll show you some folk that don't pray. Huh? The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of righteous men and women avail much. Lift your hand and say, my prayer avails much. And Second Chronicles said, amen, if my people that are calling by my name, huh? anybody here a saint tonight, huh? come on, wave your hand, say, you're talking about me. If my people that are called by my name huh, would humble themselves and pray huh, and seek my face huh, and turn from the wicked way, huh, I wish somebody would jump up and say, prayer will turn you. Anybody been turned tonight? I don't care what you used to do. Prayer will turn you. I don't care what you used to like. Prayer will turn you. I don't care what used to make your toes curl up and the hair stand on the back of your neck. If you pray, clap your hands and pray, 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 pray. If you pray, if you pray, you can withstand anything. You can do anything. You can fight any enemy. Clap your hands and I believe I'll pray. Prayer is the answer for the saint. Prayer. Somebody lift your hand and say, pray, 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 pray. I wish y'all would say it in power. I wish you shout, pray, pray, pray. Going through, pray. Need some money, pray. Want a husband, pray. Bad marriage, pray. Bad children, pray. Sickness in your body, pray. Clap your hands and say, pray, pray, pray. Amen. There's nothing that we can't do. Building ourselves up. Amen. In times like these, on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands and say, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm concluding. Amen. I heard a story. You can take your seat. Amen. There was a cat. Amen. That used to sit outside a mean man's house, Sister Wooden. And at night, the cat would sit on the porch and sing her cat song. And the other people on the street, amen, would give the little cat milk. And they liked the cat because the cat song was sweet. It was a nice little song. But, but the man, praise God, in this house was a mean man. Touch that neighbor and say, you're going to meet some mean people sometimes. A mean, mean man. And, and the cat would come and sit, praise God, on the stoop of that man's backyard and sing. How many of you know that when you have the Holy Ghost, you can sing in the devil's backyard? <laughs> Anybody know about that? Amen, amen. So that cat would come night after night, and he would sing. And, and that old man would throw rocks, amen, and she kept right on singing. How many of you know you can sing when the devil's throwing rocks? 
Anybody know about that kind of living? Amen. The cat would go on and sing. And amen. One night he got so irritated. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to sneak up on that cat. And I'm going to drag, amen, grab that cat by his tail. And I'm going to throw that cat into the parking lot. And when he falls on his back, when he hits that concrete, he's going to be dead. And so he watched, amen, every night the cat came. Amen. And most of the nights the cat was too quick. Tell your neighbor, amen, you're too quick for the devil. Oh, yeah, he couldn't catch the cat. But one day, amen, the cat was singing and was not, praise God, looking. That's why you got to watch and pray. Isn't that right? He, he was singing and he wasn't looking and the mean man crept up behind the cat and grabbed him by the tail. And he began to swing that cat. How many of you know that every now and then the devil will get a hold of you and he'll go to swinging you? Anybody ever been, praise God, in that kind of situation? I, I wish I could talk to some people that had a testimony. I, I know the young people don't know what I'm talking about, but all y'all ain't 15. All y'all not 20. Let everybody older than 13, 30 say, I know what you're talking about. Amen. The man got the cat by the tail and began to swing him, began to swing her in the air. Amen. Swing her faster and faster. Amen. And he aimed her, praise God, toward that concrete parking lot. And he said, I'm going to throw her down on that concrete. And I'm, amen, going to watch her die. But the whole time the cat was swinging, he swung around and round and round. Anybody ever, amen, the devil just took you round and round and round? Amen. And when he, amen, when he loosed the cat in the air, somewhere in the middle of the air, that cat repositioned herself. I can't get no help up in here. Somewhere in the middle of the air, that cat got herself together and repositioned herself and landed on her feet. I can't get no help up in here. When you pray, somewhere in the middle of the air, you'll reposition yourself. Tell your neighbor the devil tried to kill me, but I repositioned myself. Devil thought I was gone, but I repositioned myself. Tell your neighbor somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle of the air. She said, I can't die now. Grab your neighbor by the hand, say you can't die now. Come on, grab him by the hand, say you can't quit now. So I know you're in the middle of trouble, but reposition yourself. I know you're in the middle of a divorce, but reposition yourself in the middle of cancer. Reposition yourself and you'll land on your feet. That's because I'm a saint. Clap your hands, I'm a saint. I'm always going to land on my feet. Shout it out. Grab your neighbor by the hand, say a saint. Come on, come on, get somebody by the hand, say a saint. Always lands on his feet. Come on, tell your neighbors, I don't know what you're in the middle of. But come on and reposition yourself. Tell your neighbor you're not going to die. You're going to land on your feet. You're not going to lose your mind. You're going to land on your feet. With your car bullshit, that abortion. No matter what the doctor said, you're going to land on your feet. I wish somebody would step in the aisle and say, I'm going to reposition myself. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He'll eat care bullshit. Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere. Somewhere in the middle. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I don't know when I got my second win. But it was somewhere in the middle. I don't know what I made up my mind. I can't what what's going to kill me. But somewhere in the middle. I don't know what I told myself. That I could raise these children by myself. It was somewhere in the middle. Amen. The Holy Ghost repositions us. And when the world throws things at us. And we find ourselves, amen, spiraling to our death somewhere in the middle of the air. We, amen, we reposition ourselves and we land on our feet. It's just like, amen, Jesus at the wedding of Canaan. Somewhere between the governor drinking wine and taking Jesus' water. Amen, the governor drank that wine and said, you saved the best for last. If you ask the disciples, when was it turned to wine? They say, we don't know, somewhere 
in the middle. Is there somebody here tonight that you're in the middle of something? Now reach over and get somebody that got some power. Don't get nobody looking at their watch. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm not going to tell you all my business, but I'm in the middle of something. Oh, why won't y'all help me tonight? Sisters, come on and help me. I don't want you to know all my stuff, but I'm in the middle of something. Come on and grab my hand tonight. I need you to pray over in the Holy Ghost. I need you to pray till I can reposition myself. I need you to pray so I can land on my feet. Clap your hand and say pray. That is, that is the destiny of the saint. Saints always land on their feet. I'm going home now. Get somebody by the hand. Move from your seat. Get somebody with power. So many dead folk tonight. Move from your seat. Get somebody that act like they know God. At least their lips are moving fast. Even if they're saying kibbles and bits. Get you somebody look like they got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Grab your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. I've been called a whole lot of names. Some good and some bad. But my favorite name is Saint. So I want you to know uh, that I'm a saint. Uh, I want you to know uh, I've got the Holy Ghost uh, and I've got it with power. Uh, I want you to know uh, I can't lose for winning. Uh, I can't sink because I'm going to swim. Uh, I can't die sick. Uh, clap your hands and say, I'm a saint, I'm a saint. Uh, now wrap your arms around the net and say, come on, let's be a saint. Pull them in your arms and come on, let's be saints. Uh, Tell that neighbor, say, come on, let's be saints. Come on, let's love each other. Come on, let's treat everybody right. Come on, let's be obedient. Come on, let's submit to the ocean. Y'all ain't hugging nobody. Grab your neighbor, say, come on, let's be a saint. Tell your neighbor, he'll bless you if you're a saint. He'll help you if you're a saint. He'll save your children. He'll heal your body. Come on, come on. Let's be a saint. Clap your hand and say us. Say us. I, I wish these mothers would move. I wish you'd move. Just go to two or three people. Say, saint, 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 saint. Get out of your seat and say, a saint, a saint, a saint. Come on, tell your neighbor, saint, a saint, a saint. Come on down the road, Holy Ghost. Somebody say, Holy Ghost, come on down the road. Holy Ghost, Ebosha. Somebody holler, Holy Ghost on the road. Clap your hand and shout glory. Say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost on the road. Power on the road. Deliverance on the road. Healing on the road. Clap your hands and I'm a saint. Come on, come on, let's be, let's be saints. Amen. Get someone in your arms tight. Just everybody do like I asked. Just get them in your arms and whisper, say, come on, let's be saints. Come on, talk to them. Say, come on, let's be saints. Talk to them. Say, I don't know what you're in the middle of, but come on, let's be saints. Say, you need, whisper in the air, say, remember who God is. And say, remember what God does. And say, if you're going to stay a saint, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Now, everybody with the Holy Ghost, get somebody that ain't got the Holy Ghost. And just grab a Mikobosha. And come on, tell that neighbor, God's getting ready to give it to you. Put your hand in that neighbor's belly and say, out of your belly. I wish some old mother would say, come on down the road. Come on, help me, Sister Mary. Get the mic tonight. Come on down the road. Holy Ghost of God. Come on, clap your hand and say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. I can't get no help up in here. Say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Now, if you need something tonight, clap your hand and say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor, Holy Ghost on the road. Power on the road. Come on, Shia. Power on the road. Open your mouth, say, Power. Power on the road. Clap your hand, say, Strength. Strength on the road. Tell a neighbor there's some money. Money on the road. Clap your hands out. Holy Ghost. Building your 
yourself up. Every hand get a hand. Amen. Every hand get a hand. Y'all don't want to pray and I don't have the strength to pull you. I'm going to come back when I have more strength. But get that hand. Amen. What you need tonight. Some of you are here waiting for a word. This is the word you need. The Holy Ghost. I want you to know, praise God, just like in Monroe, storm clouds are going to rise. Tornadoes are going to hit. And you're going to be left in the dark if you don't have another source of power. You got to have. I wish somebody that would, amen, amen. I wish somebody that had the Holy Ghost. I, I tell you what, I tell you what, give me five minutes. Everybody that's got the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, stand up. And everybody that does not, sit down. Maybe that's what I need to do. Wait just a second. Wait just a second, Brother Musician. Everybody that has the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, amen. You didn't go to a class to get it, amen, but you got it out of your belly, flowed rivers of living water. If you have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I want you to remain standing. If you do not have it, I want you to sit down. All y'all got the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Let me 